har stadigvæk fundet ud af, hvordan jeg kan få den til at være med der. Okay. Og så spørger du. One more nerdy question. How hot can a voice call get? So for some reason, this is a question I've received a lot lately, uh, and I'm not really sure why, but it's an interesting question. We often talk about in our loudspeakers how um, the voice coils are designed for good heat dissipation. You know, it's important to get the heat away from the voice coil. So people will ask me, well, how big of an issue is that actually? How hot can the voice coil get? Our speakers have been designed so that the voice coil can get more than 100 degrees without any sort of damage. And so you can ask, does that actually happen? Well, the voice coil can easily get up to 200 degrees if you are overdriving the loudspeaker. What typically happens is the voice coil gets so hot that the lacquer on the voice coil starts boiling. And that means that it has reached those temperatures of around 200 degrees, which is like six and a half million Fahrenheit, I have no idea. So uh, that will basically ruin the driver. Other than whether the speaker actually breaks or not, um, there is a phenomenon called power compression, which is quite important in the design of a loudspeaker. So power compression is what happens when the voice coil heats up, uh, then the material actually has more resistance. Uh, and more resistance means that when you put power into it, it will become hotter. It will turn more of the energy into heat. Uh, and that uh, lowers the sensitivity of the loudspeaker. So when the voice call is hot, it's not actually playing as loud as it's supposed to. Um, and, and this is quite important to how a loudspeaker sounds, especially when you're playing loud. One of the small secrets to how we design uh, our loudspeakers at Dan Audio is we try to balance the power compression between the speakers. So if you have a tweeter and a woofer, uh, you want them to sound um, similar when you are driving them in, in power up and down. If you are playing loud, then typically the woofer will receive more power than the tweeter. And it also normally starts power compression um, earlier than the tweeter does. If you have a woofer that's power compressing, uh, then it will not play as loud and then the tweeter will keep going uh, if it doesn't have any power compression. And that means that the, the sound will be skewed. Now you have more tweeter level than, than woofer level. Uh, so, so now the sound will be harsh uh, because of that imbalance in how they are, they are compressing. So uh, this combined with how it actually sounds, different types of drivers will sound differently when you are overdriving them. That really changes how the speaker behaves when you're pushing them towards the limit. So that's, that's part of the secret for, for Dan Audio is uh, how to make them natural sounding even though you're reaching the limits of the loudspeaker. So the question is, why does it get hot in the first place? Um, so basically that's because uh, Einstein says so. If you imagine an electric kettle, uh, that is basically a coil of wire that you put power into. And when you put power on, into the wire, the wire, it heats up, which then heats up the water. Well, a loudspeaker actually works quite similarly. It is a coil of wire. When we put power into that, it creates a magnetic field that makes the speaker move. But because speakers are actually quite inefficient, more than 90% of that power is turned into heat, and, and the, only the rest of it, less than 10%, is turned into sound. That's, that's actually quite significant. So, so whenever you, you're driving your speakers, a lot of that power turns into heat. That heats up the voice coil. So that's why it's important to dissipate that heat.